the final game of the 2024 Six Nations, France versus England. Each of these teams could still, in theory, win this title. And for them, the good news is that they'll know exactly what they have to do come kickoff time. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. I've got everyone's favourite pundit, Elko, with me again today. There he is. Hey, TT. How you doing? Looking forward to um, Mad Super Saturday and this um, dessert um, for Saturday evening. We hope it'll be a dessert. Let's, uh, let's keep our fingers crossed for that. Um, and as we said, both teams could still potentially win this championship or finish like as low as fourth, I think, something like that. So it's, you know, in terms of psychologically, it's kind of a wild, open fair of, you know, different things to aim at. What do you think these teams are going to be focusing on? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a weird one. I'll, I'll start with England because it's probably a little bit easier. I, I think for them, it's a question of can they, can they back up the performance from last week and can they, have they got it in them to, to uh, sort of uh, get to that emotional pitch again? Um, I, would, I would think it's going to be quite difficult um, considering how well they played and, and, and how not only in, in terms of skill, but the whole sort of physical... Um, performance and, and and the output that all all players um um put in you know um and for the french it's uh it's a tough one really i mean they're coming off uh, a strong win um b- big old side again and um, they're not playing in paris um it, it it's a tough one but it's la rose beef and and they won't want to lose um and they would have seen la- last week and, and thought oh well um england are you know they're not england aren't going to catch France by, by surprise like they did with, with Ireland and, and everybody. No one saw it coming. Now we all see it coming and, and it's kind of, you know, so it's an interesting one. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, I think that French pack is going to have a lot to do with which way it goes on uh, on uh, Saturday evening. Yeah. Just backing up what you said on the England side there, you know, that, that performance last week uh, was such a jump up, you know, in terms of what they produced recently and it's very hard I think to do that back to back I think you know teams develop over time and you'll have these peaks and then you know that sets new standards but to match them again in the very next game is very difficult so if England get to that those heights again I'll be delighted but also surprised I do expect them to be better than previous games in the championship will that be good enough to beat France I'm not sure at the moment Um, okay let's get into the French selection and there is nothing to talk about here because it is exactly the same 23. And I, I question, I, when has that ever happened before for France? Probably not that often. No, no. I, I can see why, though. Um, you know, if it ain't broke. But also, uh, I, I think it's the way to go against this English team is, is, to, is to go, you know, at it with a, with a massive pack and, and try and beat them up um, and, and go for them at set piece. Uh, so it's it's enormous. We, we we spoke about it in depth um, last week before the Welsh game, um, and we, we you know we weren't wrong in terms of what it looked like on the day. They were they were just huge, and and um, that, that again you know physically can England get get back up to us? Uh, although they didn't they didn't um, their their output probably wasn't as much interestingly physically because um, they had way more ball and, and Ireland Ireland had to tackle a lot more. But um, you know. It, it will come down to that emotion and wanting to get up off the ground and, and hit these huge men. But um, I think it's a clever selection and um, one I'm really looking forward to seeing um, how, how this pans out up front. Yeah, there's no question. These huge, huge Frenchmen are going to be sent into battle time and time again. France last week against Wales showed like a really uh, simple, direct game plan, really. Just batter away, go the same way, same way, same way. And it was effective for huge parts of that game. I I don't see any reason why they'll change this week. I think they'll try and use the same pattern and really go after England physically. And I think, especially in the scrum, especially in the scrum, they'll go after them from the start. Into the backs, uh, yeah, and as I mentioned, exactly the same. All the guys get a chance to uh, settle in um, and especially needing to settle in and particularly defensively, Ramos and Deporter, who were looking pretty flaky in that first half against Wales defensively, got better in the second half. But I'd question whether that was just because they had the ball for most of the second half, so didn't have to defend all that much. Time will tell. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of, 
really glad it's it's the same side because I'm I'm intrigued to see how England are going to attack Ramos and they are. I just, there's just no there's no doubt about it. We called it out last week. He was he just, he wasn't interested, was he? He was awesome going forward. And whether whether they maneuver and maybe change something up, maybe they stick a back row of ten off line outs and things. I don't know, but um, it will be interesting to see, and, and I look forward to. Uh, to see what um, England's attack will will do there, but yeah, otherwise it's it's the same as it was. Really attacking. I didn't realize that um, Deportier like he doesn't play twelve. Um, no, he's more thirteen, I think. Well, I don't think he's ever played twelve, apparently. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, that's that's the chat. Uh, apparently, Ramos was like, "Oh, how, how often do you play? I've never played twelve. And they asked Vicky to swap, and he said no. So, um, there you go. He he looks. I like him. He looks. He looks really good. Big big kid. Um, strong and, and that that this this backline will will have a will have um, a, again you know physically really big and 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 will will go at England um uh, in the centres for sure. Yeah, uh, Penno is the player I want to pick out. You know, in a team that's misfired fired for most of the championship. He is just like just sort of taking the game on his own for vast periods of these French games. And he just looks incredibly dangerous, even though he hasn't had the best quality of possession. Um, and then Barre is the other one as well, who made a couple of positional errors against Wales. So I'd like obviously he's going to learn from that and get better. And it was potentially just trying to do too much in a debut international. I think at home uh, in, in France, we'll probably see an improved performance from him as well. Yeah, again, you know, England will will probably look to 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 look at that at, with attacking kicks and and try and move him around the place a little bit. Um, but he 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 looks good with the ball in hand. They all do. I mean, that's that's a given, isn't it? With the French, they all they all look good. And yeah, Penno's like he's uh, he must be very frustrated because uh, he just hasn't had the opportunities that they were giving him. Um, when when um, the the little general was in town with crossfield kicks looking for him all the time and everything else, so um, it will probably come good. Um, he's got one eighty minutes to sort of um, get 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 some points, and uh, it might it might happen on on Saturday night. Um, we'll, we'll 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 see. But he's 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 apps. I think he's a fantastic player, and he's. I thought he might. I thought he might lose his head a little bit, but actually last week he was really good despite not scoring. He set up, I think, too. Um, and um, yeah, really good. Looks like Dan Aykroyd. Do you ever think that? <laughs> Never thought that, but I probably will from now on. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd's French. Uh, and, as... <laughs> <laughs> um, and as before, the, the forwards are exactly the same as last week. Some huge men to come on Please. and potentially, you know, just ram that down England's throat later in the game as well. Just one little side note here. Pasolo Tuolagi has been selected to play for the under-20s on Friday night. And I'm not sure if anybody's played in the under-20s and the senior Six Nations in the same season before. So look out, look out England under-20s in that respect. Wow. Didn't think you were allowed. Fair enough. Yeah, there's a few boys from the top 14 that have been, have been drafted back in. So that probably tells you how good this English under-20s team is. Um, I watched the game on Friday and um, Friday night and it was absolutely brilliant. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's a good stat, actually. We'll have to look into that to see if that's ever happened before. Yeah, and just sort of a side note, another side note on that as well. A lot of these French young kids are getting a lot of game time in for their clubs, you know, at a young age, more so than English players, yeah. young English players in English clubs. So, like... I, th I think these young French guys are coming through with much more experience when they come into the senior side, which is why we're seeing more youngsters playing for France. Yeah, it's it, I guess well, way more teams. Um, you know, the, the divisions are, are are big, much more teams. Um, obviously, the name um, and, and what's happened in in England with uh, with sort of three clubs going under and 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 uh, you know the championship the same sort of thing so i mean we've, we've been saying this for years that the the kids in the academies weren't not really getting top class games and that's something that we you know that the english uh, setup have got to i've got to look at um and see see how they can change that and, and get more more of the kids playing and uh, maybe maybe with wasps in the urc um the rumor is 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know the England RFU are definitely looking at that. I'm sure that's a key part of the changes in the future of the game that they're looking at at the moment. Yeah. However, let's not digress too far. Let's uh, let's get into the England team and the forward pack is exactly the same. Now, I thought they might swap the props here because France are going to be huge at the start in the scrum in this game. And I would have wanted, personally, I would have wanted Joe Marler to front that up and absorb all that weight. Um, I think this could be a potential problem for England early in the game. Yeah, I don't know. I believe Genji's been um, unbelievable in terms of prep and and in the change room and and getting guys going and and maybe they feel it's needed to keep that emotion going and harder for them to to do that from a from a position on the, on the bench. But I I take your point. I mean, who's he up against, Antonio? Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- those two have gone on a few times. He he may he may feel he. he he knows them and has them. Um, lower, smaller can get under him. Um, don't know who's refing, so that'll be really interesting. But um, yeah, it's uh, not that much of a surprise uh, that they they stayed the same. You know, for 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 obvious reasons, um, there'll be massive confidence. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'd be I'd be going off piece if I said that they should change because I've been saying the whole time that, that he's been changing these units too much. So it's really good to see that they're, they're unchanged and they go in with massive confidence. And um, that Martin Chesham five, six thing is just, I think they're two absolute workhorses. And do you know what? Itoji's come to the party as well. So, um, and they'll need to be, they'll need to be, um, you know, obviously fighting against really, really big guys, but just trying to outwork the French um, in, in everything that they do. Yeah, I think one of the key factors of this game is going to happen between the forward packs and it's going to be the tackling of Martin and Underhill in particular. The way they chop people to ground really quickly is going to be absolutely key. And if some of these other England forwards can learn a trick there and get these huge trench forwards to the ground quicker, then I think that will be a real key factor because there's some of, some of these guys, Itoji in particular likes to tackle high and sort of uh, wrestle a little bit. Those French forwards will just come in, pile in behind them and gain momentum. The crowd will get up and then it will be very difficult to stop it. I, th- I think the tackling of Martin and Underhill, like I said, will be a key factor. Yeah, I agree. I agree. They, they've got to stop them at source and, and you know, um, not let them uh, get get a rumble on, as you described, or, or you know, set up a mall or whatever it is. They've, they've got to just chop at source. Um, and, and also, you know, as big as they are, that's quite hard to get up and down off the ground, right? So if they keep getting tackled on the ground, then they have to, you know, they're 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 expelling en- wasted energy all the time. So yeah, it's 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 huge. Um, and uh, again, you know, they're just I, I've I've I don't have any fear about those two guys turning up. Whereas I don't know about some of the others. Um, well, Toji in particular, who's kind of come in and out. I think he's on the way back for sure, and maybe he's just seen the. The work rate of these, you know, and and if we spoke about this before, one of the things I, don't, I think Borthwick doesn't get rated for is is his ability to spot the type of player that he likes, and also to be completely sort of, um, you know, unwavering in what he wants. Um, and we're starting to see this starting to click. And if you can find a few more, or if the other players, as you said, can learn from these guys, England's pack are going to be really, really tough to beat uh, in the next few years. Yeah. <clears throat> now, in terms of the atmosphere around the ground, I think that's going to be key as well. It's being played in Lyon. I'm not sure if France have ever played an international there before, but I can imagine that like, <clears throat> the crowd around there, it's a big rugby city, and they are going to want to really be the 16th man for France. So if can these England forwards turn up there, take all that on and sort of use it as fuel themselves, that will be a key key factor as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting excited thinking about it. I think it'll be it'll be it'll be mad. But you know, but also they they if uh if England can get on if the forward pack can get on top, they won't like that either and they'll be booing and hissing and there'll be all sorts of things going on. So um yeah, they, they have huge importance up front. Yeah. Okay. And into the backs where very sadly, uh, Manny Faye were both so self-diagnosed as being concussion sy- uh, <laughs> symptoms. So took it's himself out, self-diagnosed. He said, I'm feeling, you know, basically. Well, is he a feeling- doctor or something? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> well, training to be anyway. <laughs> um, so, I mean, one, 
how mature of him to be able to sort of do that. You can you imagine the temptation to just sort of ignore that and go right? I want to play. I want to play. And in years gone by, before all of this education, I'm sure there's been many many players that would have gone and played even though they're potentially concussed. So fair play to him for standing up and, and yeah. taking himself out of it. Why? Oh, but like, can I imagine? Yeah, e- easily. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when we were playing every week. <laughs> You know, it's just crazy, really, when you think about it. But uh, I guess the worry is why why was it not picked up? Um, no, these things can be delayed. Uh, there can be delayed reactions sometimes. Did he you take might... a bang, though? M- maybe, but it maybe, m- yeah. again, no, we don't know enough about these things. It could have just been a, a glancing blow that nobody yeah. noticed and all these yeah. kind of things, and then the symptoms come later. That's, that I... absolutely can happen. Uh, have uh, has it just been Scotland that have been wearing these smart gum shields? No, we know? I think everybody has. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It just it just be interesting to see. I'm sure they'll they'll research it. You know, they will go in and go back through the footage and and the GPS and and everything the reads and just because you know it's important for going forward um, that we we are we're able to recognise. I mean, it shouldn't really take the player to, but I, I'd take your point that it, it 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 can be sort of delayed and you get a sort of day two and three and um, we start getting white spots or whatever it is but uh, yeah it's a, it's a real shame that he's not he's not there um because i think you know clearly i don't think uh borthwick would have made any changes but a a good a good guy to come in in, in daily and, and he played well when he came on so um and they got that kicking um uh, long long range kicking ability with him back in the squad so all good Yeah, and the other positive side of this as well is that freeman moves back to the right wing where i think he's much more effective at chasing kicks just because leading with his right hand instead of his left, and it does make a huge difference when you're chasing kicks. Also, he's going to be up against B.L. Beery, who's not as good at fielding kicks as um, Penno is. So I yeah. think that matchup, yeah. that matchup really suits England. So there's a there's a big positive there. Um, obviously, you wouldn't have chosen it, but it, there's a positive there for England as well. Yeah, yeah, that definitely. He's he's he's, uh, he's a good, good bit taller, I think, um, than the French guy as well. So that'll be. We'll, we'll we'll see that they'll they they will they will go for those guys I think um, for sure. But yeah, it looks it looks it looks really good. I, I'm actually I'm I'm really glad that he stuck with Ford as well. I know there was a lot of a lot a lot of sort of you know uh, with with Marcus getting the, the the kick at the end to win the game and everything else and the way we were we the way England were attacking and stuff. But um, I, I I think he's right to keep Ford in. You know. Um, there was a lot of really great stuff that he did, and I, I'm he's not a flash player, he is not Marcus, but he does a lot of unseen work that allows other players to have a lot of fun out there. And the likes of Furbank, a full back, and, and um, he, he's able to manipulate and spot different things. I, I think it's a good choice 100%. I would have been so stunned if he had dropped forward or moved him to the bench, however you want to say it. I just think, you know, he's such an orchestrator and his attacking play in the first half in particular was was absolutely world-class, outstanding. Um, so I would have been stunned. Glad to see Slade come through from his knock that he got against Ireland as well. So he's fit and available to play because I just think that consistency of selection, now they've found this, this team, I think it's really important. So great that he uh, came through and is fit onto yep. the bench. And Roots comes in for Chandler Cunningham South. And the big one here, Manu Tuolangi takes the spot on the bench. And it's been reported that this may well be his last England cap as a move overseas for next season seems likely. Oh, really? Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's a shame that his uh, cousin, no, nephew. uh, Nephew nephew is, isn't playing um yeah i, I didn't realize that that would make sense he's probably looking for a big money move um uh yeah i saw the name and i was like wow cool <laughs> i like it it's it's sort of out of nowhere and uh yeah like him coming coming on um in broken play is is you know is exciting so um yeah i'm, I'm be ashamed if it is his last one um uh, I'm, I'm a massive fan of his yeah, I do wonder if there was there was any sentiment involved in this selection. You know, I I don't think Borthwick Borthwick would let that seep into a you know a real selection decision. But you know, it seems to be maybe. I mean, the only other option would be somebody like and the name's escaping me now, but the big sale right winger who's uncapped 
um, because it's sort of in the wing position that we're probably least covered in the 23 that we've got here. Yeah, could have been a good spot for someone like a liner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, maybe, maybe there's not sentiment, but again, they're all looking at what works for Ireland and and, and trying to find things to hang your, your hat on. Um, and, and maybe that's that's you know last week uh, the, the week before was 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 obviously the, the kind of a negative energy in or, or a, you know a sad time in, in in Jamie George losing his mom and then last week was a bit of that or, or making up for the for the loss in Scotland and that and then Danny cares hundred so you may, maybe they're looking looking for something there but I I'm not sure he's I'm not sure Borthwick is ready for that yes I think he's He'll be looking at his stats and, and you know plugging in uh, players where they where they fit sort of thing. But um, yeah, um, as I said, I look forward to seeing him come off the bench. And I'm glad, very very sad to, um, that uh, Cumin South is, is injured. Do, do we know what well, that that looked pretty nasty? It, looked, it was a calf a calf injury, but we don't know exactly what. Oh, okay, I don't think. yeah, okay. Well, well, good to see Roots coming back in because I think he's a monster. So um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the other thing with Tuolagi is possible with Slade going off injured both of the last two games. Like, I think possibly they're looking at that and he might be still, a, you know, a little bit delicate and might not last the full 80. So having specialist centre cover could be a factor there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because they're short, aren't they? Otherwise, so um, that would... That would make that would make sense. I think they're covered everywhere else, and Marcus can play full back if it needs to be, and, and and they can they can move people around uh, in the back three. But centre wise, yeah, they're a bit they're a bit um, short there. Yeah, a good psychological driver, like you say, though. If it, you know, and I'm sure the guys in the squad will know. I'm sure they've they've been talking about it. You know, uh, if it is going to be his last England game, you know, he's a wildly popular player within that England squad, and they will definitely want to send him off with a win away in France. Yeah. Okay, we've kind of talked around it a little bit in terms of how this game's going to go. I think France are going to come out with huge, huge dynamism, huge power, huge directness at the start of this game. And it's going to be up to England to stop them, to stop that momentum or at least cling on until they start tiring these French forwards in particular out and then find some space. That's how I see the first half going, I think. Elko, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think tackling you have to be very careful, clever. Um, I would imagine trying to keep ball and play time high. Um, and uh, although they played really, really well in, in terms of sort of some of the attacking stuff, I, I don't see that so much this week because I don't think that's the way you, you beat these guys in the second half. Yes, um, when it's when it's on or in turnovers, when it's on sort of thing. But this, they, they probably need to be quite clever and not. Get ahead of themselves, um, and yeah, it's a question: can they, can they get to the highs of last week? You know, the last time this happened, which arguably I would say was was against New Zealand in in the World Cup before the last one in the, in the semi, and then they got to the final and were just flat. And and you know what what obviously it's a different coaching setup and everything else, but what what have they learned from from that? And, and can they get up? That's that's the huge challenge for this English team, and you know. As a neutral, part of me wants to see. I want to see a banging game, but I think, um, as I said last week, world rugby is in a much better place if if there's a strong English team because it brings everybody else up, right? Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I, I think fairly tight, uh, pragmatic, uh, quite a lot of kicking, um, and then when it's on, I think England will will, will have that confidence to attack and, and go for it. Yeah, and they should do as well because Wales showed last week that if you move the ball through enough phases, then gaps will appear in this French defence. And although, obviously, Sean Edwards will probably have been less than happy with the French defensive performance last week and there will certainly have been things done to rectify that, I still think England can cause France a lot of trouble if they can get the quality of possession that they need. OK, mate, what do you think? Who's going to win and by how much? Uh, is this Sean Edwards' last game? Um, no, I don't know. So. <laughs> Might be. Um, <laughs> I am going to go. Uh, well, because I was, you know, France might be playing for him. Uh, France, France plus eight. Sorry, guys. France plus eight. France plus eight. I can't believe it. Okay, I am definitely going for England. Uh, although I think it, you know, this game obviously two teams could go either way. 
But I, I feel England will be able to back it up. I feel like they've got more to play for in, in some way. You know, I just think that they'll be more highly motivated. And I think they'll weather the storm and I f- think they'll find some gaps. They'll be close to 60 minutes, I think. But England will win. I think they're going to score some more points again this week. You know, I think they're going to get a few tries here. 32-22 is what Jeez. I'm going to go with. My God. Really? I love predicting just wild games. It's more fun yeah. that way, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> way, way more fun than... Is it Nottingham against Harpery at the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Harpery, yeah. 3-0. Three 3-0. Nil. Three nil. <laughs> wow. It's like it's a hockey game. Um, yeah, weird. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, no, listen, no, if it's that score, I'll be absolutely... Well, I'm gonna be. We, we're gonna love it no matter what. But um, I mean, uh, and also, I mean, that'd be great if if it's that score and Scotland beat Ireland, um, or yeah, um, then with a bonus point with that, can England still win it or not? I don't know. It's all a bit. It's England, all open. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Just... and that's the actually that's that's the other point. The psychologically, right? If if that result goes England's way, so they can potentially win it. And they'll know that before the game. Is it yeah. worth like? Do they need to, do they need to be told? Surely their motivation to go and win the game oh, is yeah. enough, isn't it? Would that well, be a distraction me, to know that you could potentially win the championship as well? I'd have it on my iPhone in the in the meeting before the game. Would be watching it. Um, <laughs> no, I, yeah, I would. I would think they'll talk about it before and say, "Do we want to know?" And I would imagine the players will say, "Yeah, we we'll want to know." Um, don't need to know. Don't need to know the score. Or nothing. Just like it's on. Something like that. Um, yeah, but, because uh, actually, I, I think it'll be, it'll be hard for them not to find out. I think like it'll, you'll get the feel from the crowd or something like that. I think probably think they'll the find screen. out. So, yeah, they'll they'll want to be in control of that themselves, wouldn't they? I guess. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure. It wasn't, weren't you at one of the World Cup games and they had had the game on beforehand on the big screens and stuff? I'm sure they'll probably have it on that as well. Yeah, so maybe, they'll, maybe or someone, and if you try and keep it a secret, someone will say something stupid anyway. So, yeah, you know, there's 100%. no point. Okay, let's wrap this one up. That's what we think, people. But what do you think at home? Have we got all the key matchups decide uh, described here? What do you think about the tactics? Do you think there's going to be anything different that we haven't uh, discussed? And what do you think about the two uh selection? Uh, some sentiment in that, or purely purely business? Let us know in the comments down below and we will join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there, if you don't mind. It helps other people find it. And it just leaves me to say, Elko, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, TT. Thanks for having me. And I'll speak to you um, late on Super Saturday. Indeed. For those at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.